Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. I wanted to update my crafting guide for the standard format in order to show what the best cards are to craft ASAP for each region. I want this to be a good resource for new players so you'd know what the strongest cards are and some flexible staples to throw into most deck strategies. Before I get into the cards, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay, and also consider visiting my Patreon if I've helped you on your lore journey. With that, I hope you enjoy this crafting guide. And a quick disclaimer, as the title says, I will be covering cards that are in the standard format for this video. So getting right into it, the way I want to do this is do one region at a time, start with the champions because those are the most important cards in the deck, and then I'm going to go through the units, the spells, the landmarks, and the equipment so we have nice clean sections. So starting off we have Demacia Champions. Now the primary ones to go for if you are playing Demacia Strategies are of course Garen and Jarvin, with Elites being a very good Demacia deck right now. You can also play Shivana if you want to do a Dragon Strategy, Vayne is also pretty okay with Vayne Aatrox, that's doing pretty well. I would try to avoid Lucian and Galio at the very moment. There are some niche strategies with them, but they're not as strong as the other champions that are already listed. And of course, Quinn is also just okay. Moving on to the units, the best ones are Scythria for Elites, Fleet Feather Tracker, Trusty Ramhound for Elites, Battlesmith as well, Bright Steel Protector, Dragon Guard Lieutenant is pretty good for Dragons, the Ren Sculptor is very good. Broadwing is very, very good. Defender for Elites. Blocking Badger Bear is probably the best unit in Demacia. Make sure to craft that right away. And he's just a common. Ruin Dragon Guard is a must for Dragons. Vanguard Sergeant and Squire for Elites. Combat Cook is a good Weapon Master for Jax or other weapon strategies. Ranger Knight Defector is really good for Cultus. Silverwing Vanguard for Elites. Swiftwing Flight is pretty good. Screeching Dragon for sure. And Genevieve for Scouts. The best spells are Catch for Weapon Strategies, Blinding Assault for Scouts, Form Up is the best just general use utility card for Demacia as it is a nice plus two plus two uh, bonus, so really good for combat. Speaking of combat, Single Combat is the next best one that is general use. You can pretty much slam it into any Demacia deck. Cataclysm is also very good for most Demacia strategies. And Champion Strength is the best epic spell that Demacia has access to. The landmark is Trash. The only weapon worth running is Dark and Aegis, it's pretty okay. I wouldn't say it's worth the epic card slot though. Moving on to Noxus. The Noxus champions that you want to craft are Samira, LeBlanc, Swain, and Annie. These are definitely the four best Noxus champions. Riven is in a pretty okay spot. Sometimes she does come up and has some really interesting combo decks with her, but it's not too often. Uh, Darius and Scion definitely can pass on, don't really need them right now. I'm sure we'll see some Scion support, but they're both really mid. So yeah, as a new player, you should definitely craft the other four and try to find strategies to fit them. Samir is very aggressive, LeBlanc is great with Ash, and maybe some other strategies now that Mirror Image has been buffed. Annie is really good in aggro or control, and Swain is a premium control card. The best units in Noxus include Crimson Pigeon. I think this is actually very much worth the epic wildcard if you are playing super aggressive strategies. Elegant Edge if you're playing Samira. Legion Saboteur, Precious Pet, Arena Battlecaster, all really nice. Daring Demolisher is good for Samira. Imperial Demolitionist for aggressive burn strategies. Ionian Hookmaster is only okay. She is seeing some more play recently though. Trifarian Glory Seeker if you are playing Ash. Reckless Trifarian also for Ash. Lord Broadmain if you are playing Control. Leviathan if you're playing Swain. This is a must craft. Yes, it's an epic and that sucks, but it is a must run next to Swain. And to round it out, we have Incisive Tactician if you are playing Ash. The best spells in Noxus consist of All Out, definitely for Samira or other aggro strategies. Stylish Shot for the same reason. Brother's Bond is pretty okay. Disintegrate for control. Pirouette is a must craft for sure. Might, Noxion Fervor, both really good for aggro strategies. Scorched Earth for control. Bloody Business for Ash decks. Furious Wielder for Cultus. And Reckoning for the Ash Noxus deck as well. The only decent landmark is Ravenbloom Conservatory if you are playing an anti styled control deck. The other ones are really mid. And Darken Ballista has seen some recent play in Cultus, but I don't think it's worth the epic wild card, just like the Aegis. And the Great Hammers, not so much. Brelior champions are kind of interesting because I think there is a must craft, and then there's like a decent one, and then the rest are incredibly mid. The must craft, of course, is Ash, as she is the best Brelior champion right now. The next best one is actually Orn for Jax Orn, and then the rest are, again, just kind of mid. Lissandra only has Thralls with Lissandra Talia, and it's like okay. Nar is pretty okay. 
Udyr does have a deck with Galio, like I mentioned in the Demacia section, he's just kind of okay. Sejuani is pretty good, and Trindamir doesn't really have a home. So yeah, definitely Ash and Orn. The rest of them are basically if you want to. The best units are Omenhawk, Weaponsmith Apprentice if you're playing Jax Orn, Favored Artisan for the same reason, Harbinger of Thralls if you are playing Lissandra Thralls, Icefail Archer for Ash, Ruthless Raider is actually just a pretty good common and can be used in most beginner decks, along with the fact that Sejuani Gwen is a pretty decent deck so there are some good Overwhelm cards as well, like Ruthless Raider, and also Tusk Speaker, which doubles up as Gwen Sedge and also Jin Annie Synergy. Volpine Wanderer is a must run if you are playing Udyr, Adept Weaponsmith for Jax Horn, Averosian Trapper is a nice just well-rounded card, having that one mana Yeti is really good, Combat Cook like I mentioned in the Demacia section, good with Weapon Master stuff like Jax, Averosian Hearthguard if you're playing Ash and Hyara Allseer if you are playing Udyr. And for spells, the main ones to look out for are Frostbite and also HP buffs. So Brittle Steel is very good, Catch if you're playing Weapon Master stuff, Elixir of Iron, very nice, Three Sisters, really good, Here to Help, Inner Beast for Udyr, Flash Freeze, Avalanche if you are playing Freljord Control Strategies, Winter's Touch is very good, but keep in mind it is an epic, Harsh Winds for Ash, Unforgiving Cold for Cultists, and Wild Mysticism, same thing as Winter's Touch, it is an epic, but it's also a mana ramp, so it's important for the control decks. And that's it for the spells. For the landmarks, Frozen Thralls are really good if you're playing a Lissandra Talia. Orn's Forge is optional, I wouldn't say it's a must run in Jack's Orn, but it is a fine inclusion, especially in the more casual decks. The Darkened Spear is very good, probably the best Darkened weapon right now, so definitely craft that if you are playing Cultists, or if you just want a nice weapon card. Bone Club is a meme, but it's kind of funny. Well, so far Ionia is definitely in the region with the most bums, because most of these cards are actually pretty bad. Karma Set are definitely the big winners of the region, and they're played together, which makes it even better to craft both. Zed is all around a really good card, however you do start with two of him, so he's a pretty low investment. Shen is okay, and then the, the rest of the three are actually really bad. Ari Kenan used to be a popular deck, but it got gutted, and Master Yi is just like the most bum card in the entire game. Little side note on Shen in case anyone is wondering, he can be played with Jarvan for the barrier synergy, but it's like a high tier 2 deck, it's pretty okay. The best units include Greenglade Caretaker if you are going to commit to the Shen slash barrier strategies, Shadow Apprentice for Ephemerals, Sparring Student for the same reason, Blast Cone Seedling if you plan on playing the recent Bandal aggro deck, same with Grandfather Fey. Greenglade Duo is actually a really good general use Ionia card, you can throw it in most strategies because it's just a nice unit. Kinku Student is good for the barrier decks. Stagehand for Jin Annie, and also Ephemerals. Hit Professional is really good with Karma Set, and also just general set strategies. Shadow Assassin, much like the Green Glade Duo, is a general use card. Really nice to have vanilla card draw. Shadow Blade Fanatic for Cultus. In case I haven't mentioned before, Cultus is Kane Aatrox, so yeah, that's a deck that can be played together. Smooth Mixologist for set strategies. Sinan is actually really worth the epic wild card if you are playing Elusives or some Ari Cannon strategies. Sacred Protector for the Shen Jarvan Barrier decks, and Serene Skysinger is pretty good with the Karma set. The best spells in Ionia include Momentous Choice for Cultist Strategies, whether it be Kane Aatrox or also Varus. Even though it got nerfed, it's probably still going to see play. Nopify, Hag Out for Set Strategies, Concussive Palm, really good general use card. Deny, same as Nopify, just really good. Moral Support and Spirit's Refuge for Barrier Strategies. Dragon Ambush for Ephemerals, Place Your Bets for Set Strategies. Unworthy Soul is just another good general use defensive Ionia tool. Definitely better than Will of Ionia, so prioritize that if you do have the rare wild cards. The Black Flame is definitely the best Ionia landmark. It can be used with ephemeral strategies. God Will of Seedling is pretty nice, but it does scale with how good Kennen is, especially like Ari Kennen. So if Ari Kennen is a broken deck, then God Will of Seedling is a must run. If not, then you don't have to craft it. Uh, Mistfall and Monastery are both pretty bad. The Darkened Fan is really strong. Just like the Freljord one, the Darkened Spear, Fan is really good. Soul Sword kind of sucks. Well, completely opposite from Ionia, Piltover and Zaun has the best champions just overall so far. Emo and Caitlyn can be played together in a trap-based deck. Echo and Jinx can be played together with like Predict Aggro. Heimerdinger and Jace can be played together with a removal control strategy, and Seraphine is still in a fine spot even after rotation, with a lot of potential to become better in the future as more cards are added. So honestly, Piltover and Zaun is kind of stacked. You can go a bunch of different directions, and they have synergy with each other. Like I mentioned, Teemo Kate are played together, Echo Jinx are played together, and Heimer Jace are also played together, so that's really funny. 
The best units to go for are Ace Corn the Hex Technician for Seraphine Strategies. Yes, it's an epic. Yes, it's costly, but it's really good. Adaptatron for Heimer Jace. Drop Border for Echo and other predict strategies that might come up in the future. Forge Chief, a really good general PNZ card. Donai Urchin and Boom Baboon are good for discard strategies that centralize around Jinx. Clumpa Wumps is really good with Teemo and other traps. Pharaoh's Fondentier is a really good general use card. Definitely a must craft. Can throw it in Heimer Jace, can throw it in most PNZ strategies and get the free card. Flame Trompers are good for discard. Flash Bomb Peddler is really good for the trap decks. Sting Officer is good for the same reason. Hextech Handler for Heimerdinger Jace. Tilt Oven Castaway is really good for Weapon Master strategies like Jax. Practical Perfectionist for Echo. Puffcat Peddler is good for traps. Sump Dredger for Jinx. Ambitious Cultist is really good for Cultists. Clockling is definitely another epic that is worth it. Really good overall. It's been seeing play in multiple PNZ decks. Chump Wump for traps. Evil Imperfectionist is also good, but for the epic slot, it might not be as worth as the other ones. Solitude is good for Evelyn. Karina is worth the epic wild card for traps. And Albuspheros is also worth for the Jace decks. Moving on to the spells, we have really good options for specific decks, and we also have some good general use cards. Jury Rig is for discard. Hilt of Intelstones is really good for just any PNZ strategy. Advanced Intel for traps. Both High Note and Mystic Shot are must crafts right away, as they just deal two. That's really, really good and part of the PNZ identity, so make sure you get three copies of both. Rummage for Jinx. Time Trick for Echo. Aftershock is actually just a pretty good general use card. You can get it from the Telstones, or you can also just hard run it in your deck, and it's pretty nice to use for three damage removal or landmark destruction. Insider Knowledge and Piltover Peacemaker are really good for the trap decks. Caustic Riff is a really good general use card for control PNZ strategies. Drum Solo and Formula are premium draw cards, so you want to craft those. Explitterator, also very strong. Shock Blast, primarily for Jace. And to round it out, Sputtering Song Spinner is worth the epic wild card if you're playing Seraphine. The Forge of Tomorrow used to be good, but not really so much anymore, now that Lux has been rotated so you can avoid that. Back Alley Bar is a must run if you are playing Seraphine. For the equipment, the only one worth looking at is the Darken Harp. It is really good for cultists. Moving on to the Shadow Wiles. The best card in the region by far is Gwen. She is a really good general use champion. She can be played with a bunch of different packages, and she always sees some kind of competitive play. Maokai is the next best champion if you plan on playing deep, so definitely craft him as well if you want to go with Nautilus and play the deep deck. After that, I think Viego, Senna, and Vagar are all pretty good, slightly above average. Viego can be used with a couple different strategies. Vagar and Senna are actually played together, so if you're going to craft one, you should craft both, since they do have a deck together called Darkness. Callista and Nocturne are definitely the champions to avoid right now because there are no really good aggressive fearsome strategies or a good Nightfall deck at the moment. The best units are Boisterous Host. This is the best general use one drop card for Shadow Isles. Has Hallow, so it has synergy with Gwen, but can also be played outside Gwen decks just as a nice one mana two one that gives you the Hallow buff for the rest of the game. I would say Ceaseless Sentry is a really good card to craft for new players as it's just a generic draw card. Can use it as a 2 mana 2-1 two, to trade and also draw, so that's really nice. It's also just a common, so definitely craft it to make your deck thinner. Keeper of the Box is really good for Cultists. Phantom Butler and Redeem Prodigy are both very good and you must craft them if you want to play Gwen. Sea Scarab is a must run for Deep. Shark Chariot if you are going to do some goofy Shark Chariot Ephemeral decks. Salter for Evelyn. Chemivore and Soldier for Viego. Dead Bloom Wanderer for Deep, Moonlit Glenkeeper for Ephemerals, Vora for Evelyn, Tenor of Terror for Bandal Aggro, Eternal Dancers for Gwen, Each Tali Sentinel for Darkness, which is the Vagar Senna deck, Invasive Hydrovine for Viego, and Rekindler is a pretty good general use champion revival tool. The spells you want to be crafting are Quietus if you're playing more on the control side of Shadow Isles, Glimpse Beyond is a must run in like 95% of Shadow Isles decks, so definitely craft this and run this in anything you're doing, Hate Spike for Control or for Evelyn, Soul Harvest for Control, Undergrowth if you're playing Deep, it's also good in some general Control Shadow Isles decks. Piercing Darkness does see some play, it's a really big heal so it can be played with like Heimer Jace and also in Darkness if you want to. Vengeance is definitely the more important of the two, they're both common so I would definitely recommend just crafting both. Vengeance is probably the best general use control card in Shadow Isles. And Ruination Harrowing are pretty niche, I wouldn't craft these right away, just use them as needed. For Landmarks, Opulent Foyer is definitely the best one. Catalog of Regrets is interesting because it has come up in the past as like a Shadow Wilds plus Noxus control deck utilizing Catalog and also uh, Conservatory, so that could come up again in the future. Vaults of Helia is a recent meme. I wouldn't recommend using the Epic on it, but there are some Vaults of Helia decks out there. And Haunted Tomb is not very good. Uh, for equipment, I would just recommend not running either of these. Moving on to Bilgewater. I would say there are four clear winners for this region as it currently stands. Those four include 
Fizz if you're playing Samira Fizz aggro, Alawi if you're playing Tentacles, Pike if you're playing Lurk, and Nautilus if you're playing Deep. Like I mentioned before, that's the Maokai Nautilus deck. The next best one is Misfortune if you're playing Scouts or if you're playing Misfortune Swain aggro. So yeah, she's also really good. Nami and Jack are lacking right now, comparatively. There have been some Nami and Jack decks recently, but they're not as good or as beginner friendly for sure as the other champions. Now for the units. This top row is honestly all craftable depending on what you want them for. Uru Cultus is good in Cultus, Crackshot Corsair is good in aggro, Drag Dredgers for deep, and Jagged Butcher for aggro. Pocket is good for coin strategies like Jack decks, Sharkling for Lurk. Shellshocker is actually a good general use card. I've been seeing a lot of Shellshocker recently in a bunch of different Bilgewater strategies. Watchful Idol for Alawi. Coral Creatures, another really good general use card and is seen play in Samira Fizz. Father Fury for Samira Fizz as well. Grumble Slug for Bandle Aggro. Hired Gun is actually a really slept on general use Bilgewater card. If you're a new player, this is worth the commons. It's a very strong card that can be used in the early and mid game. Jagged Taskmaster is an epic and it's worth running if you're playing the one drop Reaver's Row Aatrox deck, but that's a little bit costly and it's also more of an intermediate deck. But if it's something that you're coming to the game already understanding and you already want to build it, then yes, run Jagged Taskmaster for that. Otherwise, it's not super good in general use scenarios. Mirai Warden is another really strong general use Bilgewater card. You can run it in any Bilgewater strategy and be pretty happy about it. So definitely a must craft right away if you have the rare wild cards. Redfin Hammersnout for Lurk. Snapjaw Swarm also for Lurk. Five Punch Pablo for Jack decks, Jaw Hunters for Deep, like I mentioned before, Piltoven Castaway is good for weapons, Sea's Voice for Alawi, Inferna for Samira Fizz, Island Navigator for Scouts, Mega Tusk for Deep, Steam for Evelyn, and Abyssal Eye for Deep. I would avoid Beast Below, he's not really needed, but if you do want to run a very budget friendly version of Deep, you can go ahead and craft the Beast Below as well, but it's usually cut from the more refined versions. Buru Lookout for Alawi, Fleet Admiral Shelly for both. Fizz Samira, and also some potential Nami strategies in the future. Devour the Depths for Deep, yes it's an epic. Deep is actually a pretty costly deck to make for new players, there's a lot of epics, so be mindful of that. Devour is definitely a must craft though, probably two of. And one of Shipwreck Hoarder, also for Deep, you don't have to craft more than one. One Shipwreck Hoarder is just kind of nice. And to round out the units, Nagaka Boros is really good for Alawi. I'd only recommend crafting one or two as well because it is an epic. And Wiggly Burblefish, I don't really know how to feel about. It just got nerfed recently, but it might still see play in Fizz Samira, so be mindful of that. And for the spells, we have Warning Shot, which is a really good card for Fizz Samira aggro, and it's also really good for plunder strategies that might come up in the future. Bloodbait for Lurk. Prize Fight is really good for Jack decks. Answered Prayer for Alawi. Heavy Metal is actually a very good general use card that can be used in aggro or control decks. Just deals two to a unit and also is a weapon destruction. Really nice card overall. Definitely craft this right away and put it into most Bilgewater decks you can make. Make It Rain, the best general use removal card. It's been run in most, if not all, Bilgewater decks ever since Bilgewater came out as a region. So yeah, Make It Rain is a must craft right away. Swindle if you're playing Fizz Samira. Lure the Depths for Deep. Risky Venture is really good for Jack, be mindful it's an epic, so you might only want to craft one or two of those if you are investing in Jack decks. Tentacle Smash for Alawi. Barb Chain is currently run in Fizz Samira, but can also be run as a general use card, especially if you're playing aggressive strategies like Noxus Bilgewater stuff, so yeah, Barb Chain really good. Parts Made Whole for Weapon Master decks. And the last few spells, Salvage is really good draw for Deep, Blood in the Water is good for Lurk, and I of Nagakoboros is not only good for Alawi, but is also a general use draw card for most Bilgewater strategies, so definitely craft that. And moving on to the landmarks, Slaughter Docks is not often run in deep, it can be, but usually not, so you don't have to spend the wild resources on it. And Reaver's Row is pretty niche, it can be fun if you're playing the Aatrox 1-drop deck or if you're just playing 1-drop aggro in general, you can definitely toss the rares at it and have fun with that deck. But it's definitely not a general use card. There's actually a couple good equipments in here. Bar Knuckles is really good for Jack decks. And Eye of God is, of course, very good for Alawi. I would say the Darken Harpoon is on the weaker side of the Darken weapons, and Jagged Cutlass sucks. And moving on to Targon. There's definitely a clear winner in terms of strength, and that is Leona. After her recent nerf, she's still good in a variety of decks and can be played multiple ways, so she's definitely a must craft right away. The next best champions are probably Aurelian Soul. Kale and Malphite, they're all pretty good and can do their own things. Aurelian Soul can be played with Leona, or he can be played with Shivana from Demacia and go with the Pure Dragons, those are both really nice. Kale has some synergy cards that can be played with her and you can just run a different core, and also she can be played with Elites, so that's really cool. And Malphite has a Talia Malphite Landmark deck that's played together, so that's really nice as well. 
The three losers are definitely Pantheon, Yumi, and Diana. Pantheon does have a deck identity called Faded. It's not super great right now, so it's more of a casual strategy or like just a tier two. However, there could always be buffs in the future or new cards added, so he could be a lot better, but as it stands right now, he's not super worth it. Uh, Diana, just like how I mentioned with Pantheon and also Nocturne from SI, there's not really a good deck for Diana. Like Nightfall does exist, but it's just kind of mid until they add more cards or buff some cards. So yeah, and then Yumi just doesn't have any real direction to go at all. So those are definitely the three ones to avoid right now, but there will definitely be some good Diana and Pantheon decks in the future if I had to guess. Moving on to the units of Targon. Chip is really good if you are playing the Malphite Talia deck. Divine Clerk for Kale. Lunari Dustbringer is a Nightfall card, so like I mentioned with Diana, if there are some better Nightfall cards in the future, and like let's say 6 months from this video being posted, there's a broken Nightfall deck, definitely want to craft Lunari Dustbringer right away. Saga Seeker is a Pantheon card. Solari Soldier is a general use card on top of being Leona Synergy, so it can be played with Leona decks or just a staple 1 drop for any Targon strategy, really good overall. Blue Sentinel for Talia Malphite. Cosmic Youngling is another good general use card. Slam it down in the early game and heal yourself, really nice. Esmus, I would say, is a must craft and one of the best general cards in the region. Can be played with pretty much anything. Herald of the Dragons if you're playing Shivana plus Aesol. Lunari Cultus is really good with Cultus, especially the Varus decks. Shadestalker is good for the Nightfall decks, like I mentioned before. If Nightfall is good, then you want Shadestalker. If Nightfall isn't good, I would avoid this for now, but it is just a common. Shieldbearer, Sunhawk, and Twilight Protector are all really good for Daybreak decks, so if you're playing Leona, definitely craft all those. Solari Priestess and Sun Guardian. I know Sun Guardian's an epic, but it's definitely worth it even after his nerf. Really good with Daybreak strategies. Wandering Shepherd is a good Weapon Master. Wing Messenger for Kale. Wounded White Flame and Blinded Mystic are both good with the Pantheon strategies. Mahira is really good for Kale. Ravoon is really good for Daybreak. Eclipse Dragon is a must run if you're playing Aurelian Soul. And Zelani the Bloodweaver is a really interesting win con for that Aatrox Bilgewater deck with all the one drops like I was mentioning during the Bilgewater section. So if you're specifically going for that kind of deck, Zelani is good. Can also be played with like Kale and Elites. So honestly, pretty nice if you open Zelani from any of the chests, but I wouldn't go out of your way to craft it, just in general. And for the spells, Targodian Tellstones are actually really good after the buff. Celestial Blessing for Kale decks. Falling Star is a general use removal tool, really good actually. Guiding Touch, another good general use card. It's a heal and also a draw. Hell Cascade, wow, yet another really good general use card. Can be played with Nightfall, but also just good in any Targon strategy or any deck that is splashing Targon. Really good draw card as well. Dragon's Clutch for Dragons. Hush is a really good defensive tool. Expanse's Protection for Cultus. Celestial Wonder is actually a pretty decent stun card. Star Shaping, another good general use card. You can play this in many Targon strategies to have a heal and also invoke a late game win con. And rounding it out, we have Sunburst, which is a really good removal option for Targon. Can be played with Daybreak stuff like Leona, but can also be played outside of Leona in other Targon strategies, so definitely craft that. For Landmarks, Mystic Vortex and Dragon Roost are run in the Talia Malphite deck. You can probably avoid Spiral Stairs and Eye of Rahorok for now. The Darkened Lodestone is yet another really good Darkened weapon that can be used with Cultus and also most Targon strategies in general. Avoid Draconic Bands, not really that good. Going into Sharima, I would say the non-Ascended Champions are the best right now. There's always a good Akshon deck around, so I think he's a pretty safe card to craft. Rek'Sai is really good with Pike for Lurk. Talia, if you want to play the Malphite Talia deck like I mentioned. And Kais is in a pretty okay spot. The Ascended Champions are really interesting because they're intended to be played together, so if you want, you should probably craft two of each and play Sundisk, which is a really fun way to play the Ascended Champions. However, there are some other strategies to play with each of them separately. Nasus is usually played with like self-slay, right? Killing your own units and stuff like that in Shadow Isles. Renekton is usually played with overwhelm strategies like Renekton Sedge, or you can also do Renekton Demacia. And Azir is actually kind of homeless right now. He used to have Azir Aurelia, but Aurelia got rotated, so now Azir's just kind of chilling. And for the units, Bakai Reaper if you are playing the Nasus slay strategies. Dunekeeper is actually a pretty good general use card, can play it in most Shurima decks. Forsaken Bakai is definitely the best one drop, we want to craft this right away, can be played in any Shurima strategy, really nice at just making the deck a bit more consistent. Voidling for Kai'Sa, Xersai Hatchling for Lurk. Just like Bakai, Aspiring Chromancer is really good as a predict card, making the deck more consistent, and is a really strong body on turn 2. Velveth the Elder for Kai'Sa. Rock Hopper, really good general use card, can throw this into any Shurima strategy and be happy. Soothsayer for the Ascended Sundisk deck. Domination for Evelyn. 
Rock Bear Shepherd is a really strong Shurima card that can be played with Thralls, it can be played with Talia Malphite, it can be played with Sundisk, pretty much anything. Rock Bear Shepherd is like the de facto best landmark synergy card. So if you want to play any deck that revolves around countdown landmarks, definitely run and craft Rock Bear Shepherd. Secret Keeper seems like a meme card, but he's actually played with Echo, and it's a pretty cool combo. So craft a couple Secret Keepers if you do want to play like the Echo Jinx deck that I was talking about earlier. Vakaran Vagabond is really good for any Akshon deck. Xerxai Collar for Lurk. Desert Naturalist has natural synergy with landmarks, no pun intended. Golden Ambassador for the Ascended Sun Disc deck. Voice of Risen is a really important epic to craft in case you are playing the Echo deck. Void Blaster is an optional inclusion for Kaisa. Vakaron Bruiser for Akshon decks. Xersareth for Lurk. Priestess of Desert Light is a meme, don't do it. And Void Abomination is a pretty worth epic if you are playing Kaisa. For the spells, we have Feral Prescience, which looks like a Lurk card, but this is actually used in Echo. Exhaust is good for most Renekton strategies. Scrying Sands for Echo. Call the Pack for Lurk. Ruthless Predator for Renekton. Time in a Bottle for Thralls, which is the Lissandra Talia deck that I mentioned back in the Freljord section. Desert Duel for combat focused decks. This is good for like Akshon or Renekton. Quicksand, which is the best general use combat trick that Shurima has access to. Please craft this right away and use it. Really strong defensive tool. Right of Negation, which is basically Shurima's version of Deny, also a must craft. Ascend its Rise if you are playing the Sun Disk Ascended deck. And Sands of Time if you are playing the Lissandra Talia Thralls. Now, Shurima is home of landmarks. We have a lot of landmarks to choose from. Ancient Preparations is very good, must craft. Buried Armory is good for Akshon. Buried Sun Disk, but it's cool. You only need one if you want to play the Ascended deck. Hibernating Rock Bear is good for countdown landmark strategies like Talia Malphite. And Salt Spire for the same reason. For equipment, Dark and Blood Letters is very good. Must craft if you want to play Cultist or Akshon. Swinging Glaive is also good for Akshon. And also Samira Varus. And for our last main region, we have Bandle City. Now this is interesting because most of the Bandle City champions are multi-region, meaning we've talked about them before, so anything I said before still stands. The new ones are Nora and Tristana. I would say both of them are very good if you want to play those strategies. Nora is more of like a control card, and Tristana is more of an aggro card. So if you want to play a control strategy, craft Nora. If you want to play an aggressive strategy, craft Tristana. For units, we have a lot to choose from. Bird is a really good general use Bandle City card, can be played in most strategies, and is also good with Bard. Otterpus is a general use card that can be played with pretty much anything, especially traps if you're playing Timo Kate. Protoporo for Tristana. Yordle Squire. Bandle Commando, really good for Trist Aggro. Bitsy Lizard is good with Gnar. Conchologist is a really good general use card that gives you another resource, definitely a must craft. Dark Bulb Acolyte for Darkness, which is the Vague Arsena deck that I talked about earlier. Grandfather and Grumble Slug for Trist. Junk Construct for Nora. Catalyzer is a must craft for Darkness, probably the most essential card in the deck. Mayor is a must run for any multi-region strategy like Tristana. Chief Nakotok and Curious Changelings are really good with Gnar strategies. Again, they're a little bit mid, but they are transformed synergy, so it's really interesting. If Fey as a concept is ever broken, it's because of Gleaming Lantern. So if a Fey deck pops up, you want to craft this right away. Team Maker for Nora. Stilted Robe Maker for Darkness. Teeny Dactyl for Gnar transform decks. Enter for Trist. Yordle Captain is actually really good for go wide bandle strategies, and he's just a common, so I do recommend trying him if you're playing a bunch of Yordles. Ava Achiever is one of the most important cards for traps, which is Team Kate. Maduli for Bard. And Bandle Gunners for Tristana. The best spells are Group Shot as a general use removal tool. Same with Pytos. Poison Dart is more centralized on the Timo Caitlyn deck, but still pretty good. Trinket Trade is a really good general use card. Drop the Bomb, usually played in landmark strategies because it summons a landmark, but it's also just a really good general use removal card. Wallop comes up every so often. I've seen it hard run in Darkness, so you could craft a couple of them. It's just a common, so it is pretty good. Puzzling Signpost is Bandle City's version of Deny, can be run in control strategies. Sneezy Biggle Dust and Yordles in Arms have been very problematic cards in the past, however they don't see a lot of play right now. That being said, it's very very easy for them to become broken, so just keep an eye on these. Cosmic Binding is really good for chimes and also a general use defensive tool for Bandle City. And rounding it out, Minimorph is really good. For landmarks, I would completely avoid both of these. Uh, same with equipment, these are all pretty bad. And to finish off the crafting guide, we have the Runeterra region, which are basically a set of champions that don't belong to a particular region, instead they count as a region themselves. Of the Runeterran champions, I would say most are good, two are average, one is bad. The ones that are good are Jax, Jin, Aatrox, Kane, and Varus. They've all had really strong decks recently, and they all have deck identities to work towards. Evelyn and Bard are a bit more on the average side currently. 
and Rise is definitely the worst one after rotation. Rise used to be really good, however some of his essential tools got rotated out, making the deck a little bit less consistent. So like I mentioned multiple times when I was going over the Weapon Master cards, those are the ones that are best with Jax, and he can be played with Orn as the second champion. Really cool. More recently, there's also been a Jax Tristana deck, so if you like the idea of those, definitely craft the cards from Bandle and also the Weapon Master stuff that I mentioned. Jin is primarily played with Annie as an aggressive strategy, so definitely craft all the cool Noxus stuff and the skill cards that I mentioned being good with Jin. Kane and Aatrox are often played together, but you can also play Aatrox with Vayne, and they're all pretty solid. Varus is played with Samira right now, but can also do a couple other things. And again, Bard, Evelyn, and Rise just don't have the best directions to go right now. There's like Bard Kale that definitely exists and it's okay. There's Evelyn Kaisa and Evelyn Viego, which are both pretty good. But none of those decks are seeing the same level of play as the other ones I mentioned. And Rise just kind of sucks. I know I went pretty fast and couldn't give a ton of context for each card, but I hope I was able to point you in the right direction for general use cards and what cards I often see within certain deck archetypes. That way you know how to use your resources based on what sounds the most fun for you. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, gameplay highlights, and meta reports in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!